This is how we ride. This is how like we ride. Like a racer. I said you pointed out the late model crowd is all about tire dope. Well, the sprint car crowd is all about trash control. And honestly, cool. I feel like tire dope would be more effective in sprint cars and trash control would be more effective in late models. Have you got the exp- I mean, that's how it looks like to me based on the suspension and things that they got. Yeah, I mean, I think I mean, I think both are obviously going to be an advantage. Um and and I've I've personally ran traction control in a sprint car. You I mean, have. I, I, you're a cheater. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. yeah. Well, okay. Well, was now, it an old <laughs> unit off a, a Stockton's car? No, I'm just playing. I'm just. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I ran it at a local Indiana race where there is really no rules. So I felt like I wasn't exactly breaking a rule, but, um, yeah, I've run it. I mean, it, and it's, it's not something you're just going to plug in and go from being an eighth place car to winning races. Um, but it could definitely take from when you're running second, third, fourth, all the time to, to winning races, you know, it, it definitely will help, especially with a non-wing sprint car. I mean, you're talking, especially nowadays, eight eight hundred and fifty to nine hundred horsepower, and and a twelve hundred pound race car. I mean, there's no way you're ever going to hook that up. So, um, dope some tires and throw some traction control in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, That's the fix. You, know, you go to go to go to Southern Indiana, and, you, and you'll see probably a little bit of both. Right. Well, yeah. Well, did you ever see anything <laughs> with trash control in light models though? There was, there was the, I saw one video on YouTube. I don't know if it was four or five years ago. It wasn't here recently. It might still be on there, but it was like, an, uh, what could trash control do for you? And it was a late model at some high bank Tennessee track. I don't even know if it was a super, it might have been a 604, but it showed him running yeah. normal laps and you know, normal nine grand down the straightaway and then backing her through the corners and it was like he ran like a seventeen six or something like that, fifteen, whatever. And they put that trash control device on there and it showed the RPMs and that thing never went over sixty eight, seventy two hundred RPMs around the entire track. And it was like a half yep. a second faster. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean it's uh you know, you you gotta you definitely have to go test with it and get it right, but um you know, the few times I ran it, like the first couple of times I ran it, I, I, I said, I don't even know if it's hooked up right. Cause I can't even tell. So then, you know, you get on those little knobs and stuff. And all of a sudden I said, well, let's just crank it all the way up and see what it does. And I pushed off for a feature and I couldn't spin a tire. Like I, I would have never, I actually reached down and unplugged it because I, I would have never made a corner. I mean, it, it, oh, it, it broke was loose way, t- Oh no. Yeah. It was way too far to the other side. So, um, definitely can help. I, you know, we definitely checked a lot on the late model side and, and I mean, you get, you get little, uh, birdies kind of telling you, Hey, look for this, look for that. And, and, uh, I mean, we, we did, you know, it, it's, there's a lot of places to hide stuff in the late model. I mean, without pulling everything apart, taking all the body and interior and all that stuff apart. I mean, it's, it's pretty tough, but, but do I think it's out there? Sure. I, I think, I think the late model side and the sprint car side, both have people running it, um, or at least at times. But it's it's pretty difficult to to find. I mean, you know, I, the way I had mine set up in a sprint car, I I could reach down and pull on it and and walk away, and you'd never know it was in there. So that's a that is a tough a tough situation, a tough thing to try and police. Um, but it's I'm sure it's I'm sure it's out there on both sides. Well, and something that is not uh, trash control exactly. I think it was you that was explaining it when y'all changed those when they did the, it was like an ignition ignition box um, change rule that came out for late models. It was like the first or second year you were there, and it had to do yep. something with what they do in midgets with Keith Coons and the Toyotas. And I think it was the Chili Bowl that just outlawed that same part this year for the first time. Well, so so with the late models, they were they were running real standard like MSD style ignition boxes and they were just starting to get into having like programmable ignition boxes to where you could hook a computer up and you could pretty right. much make the timing curve and you could do a lot of stuff with it. You see him um, at the chili bowl, the guy that, running around with the laptop, that's what he's doing. Right. And it, and that stuff has been in the midget side for a long time, having programmable ignition, but I think it opened up a box that you just don't want to go down. I mean, it, it, it makes it to where, there's a lot of things you can do obviously with a computer and, and plugging that thing in and, and programming stuff into the box is just a, a box that, that you just don't want to open. Um, luckily it hadn't been in the late model side. So as it was starting to come out, um, I, I, I went to Kenny and we talked a lot about it and I explained to him how, 
how much of a mess it could cause. If how does it this. work in a midget? What's what what goes on over there right now today? And is that the same part well, they outlawed at Chili Bowl or no? Well, so the the stuff that they outlawed for the Chili Bowl deal, um, it's a specific brand that is that came out with. It's basically trash control built into it. Um, but the same thing, you can plug into it and you could change things. You know, you can move where it starts and when it stops. Power bands. And, yeah, it just—I mean, you, it just opens up to where it, it just it it will absolutely kill the the local guy that's trying to to do it on a budget. Um, so they they outlawed a particular brand and part number for Chili Bowl, which doesn't mean that there's not going to be track control there. So the part um, that you, you outlawed know, in late models though is still going on over there. Well, well, the the part so we so we went to the different brands that built um, ignition boxes. And any of them that were programmable, we, we outlawed. So it wasn't just an okay. MSD or, you know. So we basically, any of any brand that made ignition boxes, if you had one that was a programmable ignition box, we said you can't run those. Um, which is kind of like what Chili Bowl did, but they just did it with one brand. There's multiple brands of boxes. There's there's. So did they eliminate all of the track control at Chili Bowl? Probably not. But they definitely helped, you know, keep some of it out. Because cause this deal is, is obviously kind of the latest and greatest, and any team that shows up at Chili Bowl and thinks that they have a chance or wants a chance to win is probably going to have to buy this box. Um, so, you know, at three grand or whatever it was, I mean, it, you know, they were, they were going to, a lot of teams were going to have to go buy it to think they could keep up. So, in a, in a way, they helped save some teams some money, but they, I don't think it, I don't think it fixes the problem, um, but it, it, it definitely helped. What is the problem with? The, I guess we're talking about midgets at Chili Bow. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it the electronic ignition makes it. I mean, it, you know, it makes it and and being able to program your box. I mean, pretty much every electronic ignition that that is going to be at Chili Bowl is going to be somewhat programmable. Um, you know, most of them have have a port to plug in and and do a lot of different things with it. So, um, you know, I think the midget side is so far down that that road that I don't know that you can come back from it. Um, you know, it, it's just it's made it really tough to, to it's tough to keep up, but it's obviously it's tough to to police, and it, it's just like tired dope. I mean, you you can police it, and you can try and look for it, but I don't think a lot of people want to find it. This is how we ride. This is how we do. Ride, must, up high.